Hey guys, what's going on? Shane, it's Shane Hubbard Fit, where we teach you how to lose weight without counting calories or doing exercise you hate. Today's topic is going to be about how to lose weight without tracking calories, so kind of the premise of my entire coaching program. And I want to really teach you this because I think it's super important to learn this skill uh, because it's a lot easier than having to count calories. Now, before we get started in kind of the nitty gritty details, I want to make sure this is the right video for you. If you're the kind of person who's like, you know, 13, 12, 10% body fat, you have probably kind of come to the end of the line with being able to just kind of do this based on habits like protein, carbs, and fat tracking, you know, in a very small kind of way. So um, this is not a video for you necessarily. This is a video for somebody who's, you know, 20, 25, 30, 35 uh, percent body fat who really needs to get some of the basics in order first before they start even bothering with counting calories. So I just want to make sure that you're in the right place before we get started so that all this information that you're about to hear is actually going to apply to your needs. So kind of getting to the main topic, how do we manage losing body fat without having to track calories? And it comes down to some very basic habits that you need to work on. All right, the number one thing that I see anyone who comes into my coaching program or any, any nutritional log that I get to see from my clients is a lack of protein. Right? Getting a significant amount of protein consistently at each meal is one of the best places to start. And it's the best place to start because it does a lot of things. Protein is not just for building muscle. Okay? That's a common misconception I believe that we all have, and I know that I've had it in the past, is that protein is only essential for building muscle, but it's essential for building tissue in your body, period. It's also a huge benefactor in trying to reduce your total amount of calories. Now, when we think trying to reduce our total amount of calories, we think about eating less, but it's more about eating the right foods than it is about eating less food. So, for instance, if you're trying to create a caloric deficit, but you're also trying not to get hungry all the time, because that's typically what happens when we try to eat less, is we actually increase our hunger, and then that binge eating kind of cycle comes about, and it becomes harder to eat less, because you're always hungry. It's more about eating the right types of foods more often than trying to dramatically reduce our calories. You always have to take a little bit of calories out, because otherwise your caloric deficit doesn't get created, but at the same time, you wanna make sure that you're still supplying yourself with the right nutrition. So how do we do this? The very first place I see uh, being fit is going to be protein. So look to increase your protein at your meals. All right, so tip number two is going to be making sure that you get fiber-rich vegetables at at least two different meals during the day. And the reason for this is very similar to protein in the sense that fiber-rich foods, whether it's a, you know, a high-carb kind of starchy food, or if it's like a low-carb kind of vegetable-based food, then you're going to have less hunger throughout the day because those foods fill you up and they keep you full for longer. One of the one things that we're really trying to minimize is how hungry we are during our caloric deficit. It's normal to be a little bit hungry. It's not normal to want to rip somebody's head off every single time that you get to your next meal because your blood sugar is dropping and you just feel miserable. So in order to do that, we have to include vegetables into our meals. And I'm not saying you have to eat them bland. I'm not saying you have to eat celery. But what I am saying is, is that you have to include them in your meals if you really want to maximize your fat burning potential over time without creating such a deep and painful hunger all the time that you're constantly fighting. Because let's, let's face it, willpower has not been shown to be effective for losing weight over time. It's just not. It's, not it's, it's a very finite resource, so it's not going to help you to try to fight through it and white knuckle your way through being hungry. It's better to try to manage your hunger by picking the right nutritious foods that are going to keep you full for longer. All right, so that's tip number two. Tip number three that I think really affects a lot of people is getting the right portion of carbohydrates. It can be very confusing how many carbs you actually need, and it's going to be something that you're going to have to trial and error with a little bit. It's not going to be a perfect system right off the bat. I have created meal plan templates for you to download for free if you want kind of an idea and some structure. You can, uh, down in the description below, there's a link to that. You can download that, and it'll give you kind of an idea how many carb portions and protein portions, by the way, you'll need based on your body type. Okay, so you can download that below. But when you're looking at your portions, 
a lot of times just eyeballing it isn't going to be effective. I've, I've had this problem myself. I'll actually measure out my carbs and it's somewhere, you know, it's about, I would say probably like 150 calories more than I actually need. And I end up either throwing it away or eating it when I don't really need it. So what I like to do is I like to measure to an extent about how many carbohydrates, because it's the, it's the type of food that I tend personally and what I see some of my clients struggle with to eat more of and kind of overeat in a lot of regards. So if you're the kind of person who overeats carbohydrates and you're trying to keep them in your nutrition plan, but you're also not trying to you know, overdo it, then measuring can be really easy. And, and measuring a cup of rice or a cup of potatoes or you know, whatever it is, like having one slice of toast versus two slices can be a pretty easy process once you get in the habit of doing it. So if you're the kind of person that has a tendency to you know, eat more carbohydrates at a meal or even overeat, you might wanna look at your carbohydrate portion first and then if you're still hungry afterwards and you've had your carb portion, what I would recommend from there is to try to fill up a little bit more on protein or a little bit more up on vegetables, all right? Now, again, this can, be, this can vary from person to person, but on average, that's what I really like to see um, from somebody who's trying to be really diligent about making sure they're mindful of what they're consuming. All right, so tip number four, and this will be our last tip, is going to be about making sure you're mindful of your actual hunger. So in that same download that I talked about earlier, I put a appetite awareness scale and it helps you determine just how hungry you actually are. And a lot of times our hunger cues can get mixed up with actually hydration or are being thirsty. So that's one thing you can try to do. A, a quick little tip that I like to give um, everyone that I talk to is if you're hungry, drink you know like eight to 10 ounces of water. If you're still hungry 30 minutes after that or maybe even like 20 minutes after that, you might actually be hungry. And at that point, it's a good time to actually have a meal and kind of listen to that hunger cue. Um, the other thing that we can sometimes get um, in trouble with when it comes to eating is that we don't always pay attention to that first sense that we're getting full, right? What I like to encourage you to do, what I'd like to encourage you to do, that first, that just first feeling you get in your stomach that you've like, okay, I've been eating for a little while, I can start to feel myself getting full, just stop, all right? Stop, you can get up and go do something else. If you're at work, you can go walk around the building, or just stop. Give yourself 10 minutes, and if you're still hungry, continue eating the rest of that meal. Maybe that's me eating at your desk or you know whatever you gotta do, but practice stopping when you're first feeling hungry you'll typically do is you'll just keep eating because you're looking at the food in your bowl or your plate or whatever and you're saying it's not gone yet it's not done i need to keep eating and that's not true i think that every kid who's been born since the 50s was told you got to finish your plate right well you're an adult now you have more control over that you can choose to stop eating whenever you want especially when you're full or you're starting to feel full save it for later there's nothing wrong with saving it for later it's not going to waste just Put it away for later. You can have it at your next meal. You can save it you know, at a different time. Don't worry about it. Don't let that thought process get in your head and control you eating more than you actually need. And just being mindful of that can make a huge difference going forward without having to count calories. So there's a lot of things you can do and I, I really do hope that those tips help give you a little bit more perspective when it comes to understanding all the things you can do um, beyond just counting calories to manage your intake and manage your, your mindfulness when it comes to food. So anyway, guys, that is my video today. Thanks a ton for sticking around and watching this entire video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. That would really help me out. And if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, or you just want a little bit more advice, please put them in the comment section. I pay very close attention to them. I wanna help you as much as I can. So anyway, guys, thanks a ton for watching again, and I will see you in a future video.